So welcome, I'm Michael Hussey, I'm Dean here at Widener Law Commonwealth. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you uh, this afternoon to be gathered here with us. I'd like to welcome our graduates. I'd like to welcome your family and friends that have joined us here today. I would like to welcome our esteemed faculty, both our full-time faculty and, and a number of our adjuncts that are here as well, and all of our dedicated staff um, that's here today as well to celebrate with all of you. In particular, I would like to thank Dean Randy Teplitz and the many others involved in planning and executing this event. So give them a round of applause. Not, not, not too much. I was told to keep things quick and moving along. So we can thank them, but you know, just a little bit, because if I go long, then I'm going to hear about it. So we don't want that. So, uh, graduates, you have worked hard over the last three or four years to reach this day, this day that we celebrate your specific accomplishments, your awards, your recognitions that you have earned here while at the law school. Not that graduating with your JD is not celebratory in its own right. But our celebration this afternoon will highlight how engaged and how dedicated you were during your time here to the academic and communal life of the law school. Not only will we celebrate the traditional academic accomplishments, such as honoring our valedictorian, but we will also celebrate your enthusiasm for and your commitment to our wonderful community and its many activities. You have served as student ambassadors, participated in honor societies, served as officers of student organizations, and perform many hours of pro bono and volunteer work. Each of you have done so much to make Widener Law Commonwealth the wonderful community, the Commonwealth, if you will, that it is. I look forward to celebrating with all of you today and again tomorrow. It is now my pleasure to invite our intrepid Dean of Students, Dean Randy Teplitz, to the podium. Thank you. I want him to move it along because we have so many amazing students that I have so much to talk about today that I want to make sure that everybody has their moment. Uh, congratulations. It has been a pleasure working with you for the past three or four years, and I look forward to watching you receive your diplomas tomorrow. It has been positively joyful observing you on campus these past few days in your regalia, taking photos, and some of you TikToking. <laughs> I never knew how long it took to shoot a TikTok video. Apparently, it's days with different locations and, it, and costume changes. It's, it's a big deal. <laughs> when I think of this class, I will always remember your positive attitude and your grit. You conquered law school despite the fact that for most of you, your entire first year was on Zoom. Law school is difficult enough without a pandemic, but you worked hard and you built a community, even a remote community, so that you could achieve your goals, and I am so proud of you. I'm already starting to get choked up, sorry. Our student community is very special. Our students are collaborative, supportive, and kind to each other. I often say that I have the best job because we have the very best students. Our student ambassadors are often the first point of contact for a prospective student and play a critical role in the admissions process. Your friendly smile and approachable demeanor sets a welcoming tone for prospective students, and it helps us to recruit amazingly talented, kind, and engaged students like yourself. I thought it would be fitting to begin today's program by recognizing our student ambassadors. Our ambassadors are honored by wearing an orange cord as part of their regalia. Please come forward when your name is called to receive your cord. James Beebe. Cheyenne Boyer, who is our student ambassador president. 
and Cheyenne, surprise, you're going to stay up here so that you can give the cords to your remaining members. <laughs> Emmeline Breckenridge. <laughs> Alexis Coles. <laughs> Jessica Eckroat. Christine Evans. <laughs> I do not believe Kayla Gonzalez is with her, so we will give her, uh, give, uh, with us, so we will give her her cord tomorrow. Kelly Groom, I don't know if Kelly is here. We will make sure Kelly gets her, her cord tomorrow. Is Jordan Klingler here? We will give Jordan his tomorrow. I did see Shane, Shane Mackison. Yes. Caitlin Smearchuk. And Charlotte Thompson could not be with us today. Thank you, ambassadors, for your service to our law school. Thank you, Cheyenne. <laughs> Next, we're going to turn to our scholarship awards. Widener Law Commonwealth Endowed Scholarships are established through the generosity of alumni, friends, faculty, and law firms. The selection process is highly competitive. We are pleased to recognize our endowed scholarship winners for the 2022-23 academic year. When your name is called, please come forward. The Michael J. Aiello Scholarship is awarded to a Widener Law Commonwealth student who has demonstrated an outstanding academic record. Please congratulate Christine Evans, who was the winner of the Aiello Scholarship. The Linda L. Ammons Diversity Scholarship is awarded to a Widener Law Commonwealth student who is a member of a minority group that is underrepresented in the legal profession. Applicants must demonstrate the qualities of scholarship, leadership, and service to school or community. We have two recipients of this award. award. The first one is Neoma Ebay. And our second recipient is Kiana Lawrence. The George C. and Hannah K. Blissman Senior Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a student who is, who, who is specializing or has an interest in the field of tax law. Uh, Abigail Barnett, uh, Barnett is the winner. She could not be with us today. Thank you. The next scholarship is the Captain Shane R. M. Mahaffey Scholarship for Excellence. It was established in 2016 and is awarded to an active duty student or student veteran. This prestigious award is named after the 1994 Widener Law Commonwealth alumnus, U.S. Army Captain Shane Mahaffey, who was killed in the line of duty in 2006 in Iraq. Please congratulate Shane Makas Sen, who is the recipient of this award. The General Carl E. Mundy Jr. and Linda Sloan Monday, Mundy Marine Scholarship is awarded to Widener Law Commonwealth veteran students who have demonstrated an outstanding academic record. We have four winners of this, of this scholarship. Please congratulate Pace Brown, who I know could not be with us today, Carolyn Kerwin.
I do not believe Leandra Patterson is here today. Uh, and we have Serafina Ramaljo. Congratulations. The Paige Wolfberg and Worth Emergency Services Scholarship is awarded to a Widener Law Commonwealth student who prior to attending law school was employed as emergency services personnel and who has demonstrated an outstanding academic record. Thank you to Doug Wolfberg, who is here today. And the Paige Wolfberg and Worth Law Firm for sponsoring this award. Please congratulate Carrie Nace, who is the award recipient. <laughs> the Douglas M. Wolfberg Scholarship is awarded to a Widener Law Commonwealth student who has demonstrated an outstanding academic record. Thank you again to Doug Wolfberg and the Paige Wolfberg and Worth Law Firm for sponsoring this award. Please congratulate Richard Berner, who was the award recipient. <laughs> Congratulations. Next, we're going to recognize our students who have engaged in pro bono service uh, during their time at the law school. The late United States Supreme Court, Ju Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg stated, lawyers have a license to practice law, a monopoly on certain services. But for that privilege and status, lawyers have an obligation to provide legal services to those without the wherewithal to pay to respond to needs outside themselves, to help repair tears in their communities. Here at Widener Law Commonwealth, we have a public interest initiative that recognizes students who have performed a minimum of 60 unpaid, non-credit bearing hours during their law school career. It is our intent to instill the value of pro bono service in our students so that they take this great responsibility with them as they enter the legal profession. It is my pleasure to recognize the following students who successfully completed 60 or more pro bono hours. They will be honored by wearing red cords as part of their commencement regalia. When your name is called, please come forward to receive your cord. Abigail Barnett, who is not with us today. Cara Betzenberger. Cheyenne Boyer. <laughs> Kylie Clunin. Not sure that I saw Kylie. Yeah. Alexis Coles. <laughs> Trey Deck. Salt track. <laughs> Alyssa Flannery. <laughs> Neoma Ebay. <laughs> Tia Iman Coney. Shane Moccasin. <laughs> Summer Panizzo. <laughs> Jocelyn Ruff. Griffin Schmader, <laughs> Kayla Schellenhammer. They're probably off doing pro bono, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? 
Joanne Scaff, who I knew was not going to be here today. <laughs> Caitlin Smearcheck. <laughs> and Corey Trout. Now we're gonna move on to our Student Achievement Awards. The Student Awards selection process is made with input from faculty, staff, and other students. We have incredibly talented students and the selection process is extremely competitive. We are very proud of our Student Achievement Award winners. Please come to the podium as your name is announced. The Outstanding Pro, Bo Pro Bono Service Award honors a graduating student who has excelled in providing pro bono service. We are pleased to present this award to Shane Makis Sen. <laughs> Shane, was, Shane was instrumental in revamping the Veterans Association and transitioned it to becoming the Spirit of Service Association. This organization's primary focus is on fostering an inclusive environment for all of those who have served, first responders, healthcare professionals, veterans, and allies. Shane was not only the founder of SOS, but he also designed the logo, created the mission statement, and conducted outreach. They recently raised $400 for the Pennsylvania Wounded Warriors. In tandem with SOS, Shane was the lead organizer in the planning and implementing of two Wills for Hero events. This free event provide, provided wills and estate services to our community's heroes. They helped over 35 clients at our December event and 48 in April. Thank you, Shane. The ALI CLE Scholarship and Leadership Award is awarded to the graduating law student who best represents a combination of scholarship and leadership, the qualities embodied by the American Law Institute since 1923. We are very pleased to present this to Carolyn Ker Kerwin. <laughs> Carolyn has been an active member of our law school community. She served as an academic success fellow for Professor Raker Jordan and Professor Buck Handler Raphael. She was a research assistant for Professor Johnson where she created a pandemic dashboard featuring key metrics of the pandemic. Carolyn is a member of the Spirit of Service Organization, the Moot Court Honor Society, and Phi Alpha Delta. Congratulations, Carolyn. <laughs> the next award is the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, Eric D. Turner Award. This award is, is given to a graduating student who, in the opinion of the faculty, best exemplifies the positive attri attributes of a family law attorney. We are very pleased to present this award to Christine Evans. <laughs> Christine was unanimously nominated for this award by, award by both of our family law professors, Professor Buck Handler Raphael and Professor Haynes Pinsker. Not surprisingly, Christine's favorite class was family law. <laughs> Christine is a member of Law Review, where she authored a survey on Pennsylvania's Child Protective Services Law. The survey has been selected for publication, and again, not surprisingly, she plans to become a family law attorney. <laughs> The James S. Bowman American Inn of Court Award is given to a graduating student with an outstanding record in administrative law. Thank you to the James S. Bowman American Inn of Court and C. Granger Bowman and, and Sandra Liana Bowman for sponsoring this award. We are very pleased to present this award to Jane Machetti. Jane has demonstrated an interest in administrative law, not just by serving as a pupil member of the James S. Bowman American Inn of Court, but also through her externship work at the Pennsylvania Department of State Office of Chief Counsel. Additionally, Jane has written and published articles on the Department of Education's proposed rules to amend student loan rate repayment plans and on the IRS's guidance on the Inflation Reduction Act strong labor protections. Congratulations, Jane.
The next award is the Commonwealth Court Historical Society Judge Alexander F. Barbieri Award. This award is given to a graduating student for excellence in administrative law. Thank you to the Commonwealth Court Historical Society for sponsoring this award. We are very pleased to present it to Richard Verner. <laughs> Richard has demonstrated outstanding academic achievement by earning a top grade in administrative law. Richard has served as the president of the Federalist Society and held a leadership role in the Law and Government Society. During his 3L year, Richard was a pupil member of the Honorable William W. Lipset American Inn of Court and the James S. Bowman American Inn of Court. Congratulations, Richard. The next award is the Pennsylvania Bar Association uh, Business Law Section Professor Louis Del Duca Memorial Award. This award honors a student who has excelled in business law. This award goes to Ashley Stasak, who could not be with us today, but she was in Philadelphia uh, just a couple of weeks ago getting her award, uh, receiving her award at the quarterly PBA meeting. The next award is the John A. Fillion Memorial Award. It is awarded to a student who has demonstrated by excellence of scholarship and professionalism, a likelihood of making a significant contribution to the public and the profession in labor and employment law. We are very pleased to present this award to Dominique Jarrett. Dominique excelled in her employment discrimination class, earning a top grade in the course. On the practical side, Dominique has taken advantage of every opportunity that she had to gain a wide scope of legal experience while she was in law school. Just to highlight a few of those experiences, Dominique worked on copyright and trademark issues. She worked on discharge upgrades of veterans in the armed services and has worked on employment discrimination matters. Following graduation, Dominique hopes to pursue her passions, one of which is employment discrimination law. The next award is the Robert and Audrey Dernbach Memorial Award for Environmental Law and Sustainability. This award is given to a student for exemplary work in environmental law and sustainability based on both academic performance and community or law school service. The award is given in honor of Professor John Dernbach's parents, Robert and Audrey Dernbach, to signify the debt we all owe our parents. It is also given in the hope that by our actions, future generations will thrive in an environment that is at least as healthy as the one that we have inherited. We are very pleased to present this award to Lindsay Williamson. <laughs> Lindsay served as the president of the Environmental Law and Policy Society and ran events such as the day at Wild Wildwood Park the Wolf Sanctuary, Sanctuary Tour, and participated in the cleanup and planting of the Wildflower and Butterfly Garden. She served as Professor Dernbach's research, research assistant for the 2022-23 academic year, working on environmental issues. Lindsay has plans to complete an externship at Penn Future, where she will research and write on local, state, and federal environmental laws. Congratulations. Well, it's a shame that Lindsay sat down because she is also the winner of the Outstanding Law and Government Student Award. <laughs> this award is given annually to, to a student who has demonstrated academic excellence in law and government studies. We just heard about Lindsay's accomplishments in the environmental law space, but she is equally accomplished in the law and government space. Lindsay has held several leadership positions in the Law and Government Society and is currently the president. In this capacity, she plays an integral role in our Law and Government Institute and holds public roles in many of the Institute's most prestigious programming. Lindsay completed an externship with the U.S. Army War College and this past semester volunteered with the Pennsylvania Legislative Reference Bureau, where she reviewed sections of the Pennsylvania Code to ensure that they had not been abrogated. Congratulations, Lindsay. Thank you. 
The next award is the Outstanding Clinical Advocacy Award, and that is awarded to a graduating law student who has demonstrated excellence in scholarship, excellence in oral advocacy, and participated in existing clinical programs involving, involving pro bono responsibilities. It is my pleasure to call forward Professor Mary Catherine Scott, who's right behind me, <laughs> to make this award. Thank you. I don't believe in the 21 years I've been with the clinic that there is a more worthy recipient of this award, and that is Erin Lysip. <laughs> Erin enrolled in the clinic last spring, and due to some unforeseen circumstances, she completed her clinic credits in the summer. And she did a great job. And we were so excited to hear that she was going to come back the following semester, this past spring, as a clinic leader where she was going to be assigned more challenging cases and be a mentor for some of the first year clinic students. And she hit it out of the park. Erin was an exceptional clinician. She is extremely compassionate with her clients. She is so competent with her um, caseload and her work and very conscientious with her files. Um, this is not to say Erin is perfect, <laughs> by any means, no. There were a lot of learning lessons along the way. There were a lot of um, uh, teaching points, so to speak, but I'm so proud of her growth as a clinician. <laughs> <laughs> and I am very confident that she will be an outstanding attorney um, and represent her future clients as well as she did her, her clients at the clinic. And um, Professor Waldemar and I are extremely proud of her and um, you know, just would like to uh, present this award to a very, very worthy recipient, Erin Lysip. The next award is the International Academy of Trial Lawyers Student Advocacy Award. This award is given to a graduating student, student who demonstrates an overall ability in trial advocacy by high achievement in trial practice, evidence, and pleading and other procedure courses. We are very pleased to present this award to Alexandria Peters. Alexandria was a member of the Widener Law Commonwealth Trial Advocacy Society, where she competed on the national trial team for the law school. Alexandria credits this experience as being one of her most impactful experiences in law school. While in law school, Alexandria excelled in her coursework in pretrial methods, trial methods, advanced trial methods, and Pennsylvania criminal practice. She also interned with the Cumberland County District Attorney's Office. Alexandria plans to practice criminal law after graduation. Congratulations. The next award are the Legal Research and Writing Awards. These awards are given annually to, the gra to a graduating regular division and graduating extended division student for significant achievement in legal research and writing. We are very pleased to present this award to Alexis Kybe for the regular division. Mm -hmm. Alexis achieved the top grade in her legal methods classes. She has also demonstrated outstanding legal research and writing skills in her role as executive managing editor of the Widener Commonwealth Law Review. As a Law Review member, Alexis wrote a comment on Title IX sexual harassment obligations on post-secondary institutions, and this comment has been selected for publication. Congratulations. <laughs> we are very pleased to present this award to Pedro Parente for the Extended Division. Pedro, unfortunately, could not be here today, though. Pedro is a dentist, so he probably had patience. <laughs> he had some dental work to perform. <laughs> the next award is the Widener Commonwealth Law Review Award for Distinguished Legal Scholarship. 
This award is given to a graduating member of the Widener Commonwealth Law Review for distinguished service and distinguished legal writing abilities. We are very pleased to present this award to Aurora Lind. <laughs> Aurora is the outgoing Editor-in-Chief of the Widener Commonwealth Law Review and was selected by the membership to be recognized for her outstanding work and leadership. Aurora is going to award uh, her members um, with their white cord that they will wear as part of their commencement regalia. Please come forward, Law Review members, when your name is called. Gladys Balcarsall. <laughs> Richard Berner. <laughs> and she does it with flair. <laughs> Christine Evans. <laughs> Kyle Franceschi. Remember, don't forget to bring your cords tomorrow. We don't have extras. <laughs> Molly, where are you? I gave the warning. Where, there she is. <laughs> Danielle Holliday. Rachel Jones. Alexis Kaib. Jane Machetti. <laughs> Miranda Moyer. Pedro Parente, who could not be here, and, <laughs> and Jesse Tomkowitz. <laughs> Thank you. The Moot Court Honor Society Outstanding Executive Board Member is awarded annually by the Moot Court Honor Society to the Outstanding Executive Board Member for distinguished service and contributions made to the society. We are very pleased to present this award to Faith Pensinger. <laughs> Faith was selected by her fellow Moot Court members for her work on behalf of the society. Our Moot Court Honor Society members will be honored by wearing a green cord as part of their regalia. And I would like to have Richard Berner, the president of the Moot Court Society, to join Dean Hussey in awarding the green cords to the Moot Court members. We're ready. We're good. Cheyenne Boyer. <laughs> you should try to, everybody should try to one up the other one. Yeah, yeah. Kyle Franceschi. Madison Gerber. <laughs> J. 
Juliana Gorman. Danielle Holiday. <laughs> Neoma Ebay. <laughs> Carolyn Kerwin. Nick Mays could not be with us today. Parth Panchal. <laughs> Summer Panizzo. If you see a dog snuck into commencement tomorrow, it belongs to Summer. She's been lobbying for her fur friend. Faith Pensiger. And Caitlin Smearcheck. The Trial Advocacy Honor Society Outstanding Executive Board Member is awarded annually by the Trial Advocacy Honor Society to the Outstanding Executive Board Member for distinguished service and contributions made to the society. We are very pleased to present this award to Nicole Chatfield, the Trial Advocacy President. Our Trial Advocacy Honor Society members will be honored tomorrow by wearing a brown cord as part of their regalia, and Nicole, as the president of the Trial Advocacy Honor Society, will join Dean Hussey in recognizing their members now. Hey, Nicole, let's see what you can do here. OK, yeah, okay she's ready. Okay, Nicole also had a baby like two weeks ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ann Bates. <laughs> Jessica Eckroat. Neoma Ebay. <laughs> Mackenzie Lukacs. Summer Panizzo. <laughs> Alexandria Peters. Nicholas Mays, who could not be here today. Caitlin Smearcheck. <laughs> and
and Lindsay Williamson. The Order of Barristers is a national honorary organization that recognizes graduating students who have excelled in oral advocacy and brief writing skills through moot court and mock trial programs at their law schools. To be selected for the order, a student must be nominated by their faculty advisor and approved by the dean of the law school. It is my pleasure to recognize the following inductees representing the class of 2023. Ann Bates for Trial Advocacy Honor Society. <laughs> Mackenzie Lukacs for Trial Advocacy Honor Society. Alexandria Peters for Trial Advocacy Honor Society. Richard Berner for Moot Court. Faith Pensinger for News Moot Court. and Summer Panizo for Moot Court and Trial Advocacy. <laughs> and while Summer's making her, her way down, I would also be remiss if we did not acknowledge her work as part of the Wayne Jaffe Transactional Law Team. Summer, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Summer is the only graduating student on the four-member team. This past spring, they traveled to Michigan to participate in a national competition where they came in third place. Congratulations. <laughs> the Widener University Commonwealth Law School Outstanding Service Awards are award awarded in recognition of exemplary service to the law school. We are fortunate to have so many highly engaged students that we will be recognizing a whole lot of them today. Um, and I think you'll see why in just a moment. So our first recipient is James BB. James is a full-time public high school science teacher, spouse, and father who has attended law school in the evenings the last four years. Not only did James excel academically, but he took full advantage of his law school experience, serving as a student bar association representative and also a student ambassador. During his summers off from teaching, he worked at the Dauphin County District Attorney's Office, the Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office, and at a private law firm. James is a frequent panelist at orientation se uh, sessions and helps new students, particularly ones who are similarly, similarly situated, adapt to law school. Congratulations, James. Thank you. <laughs> Emmeline Breckenridge. <laughs> for the past two years, Emmeline has been a dedicated academic success fellow for Professor Hemingway, where she assisted and mentored first year students in legal research and writing. Emmeline also worked with prospective students in the TAP program and as a student ambassador. Emmeline held a leadership role in the Animal Legal Defense Fund and is a member of the PBA Animal Law Committee. She is also an active member of the Environmental Law and Policy Society. Congratulations, Emmeline. <laughs> Alexis Coles. Alexis, Alexis has held leadership position with the Black Law, Stud Black Law Students Association, Phi Alpha Delta, and the Criminal Law Society. Through her work as the Chief Justice of Phi Alpha Delta, she was instrumental in preparing our teams for the National Mock Trial Competition in Washington, DC. 
She also planned creative fundraisers, such as headshot photographs, to help sub subsidize the competition costs. Last summer, Alexa served as the captain of one of our volleyball teams. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Christine Evans. Besides excelling academically, Christine has served as an academic success fellow for Professor Kearney, where she supports and mentors first year students in torts and contracts classes. Christine worked as a research assistant for Professor Buckhandler Raphael and was a member of Law Review. She also served as a student ambassador, was a member of Phi Alpha Delta and the Women's Law Caucus. Christine completed judicial externships with Federal Chief Justice Mahalchuk and Dauphin County Judge Morris, and is a pupil member of the Honorable William W. Lipset American Inn of Court. Congratulations. <laughs> Naomi Gaston. <laughs> Naomi has served. Naomi has served as the vice president and now outgoing president of the Black Law Students Association. Through her work with BALSA, we now have a new annual field day event in April that allows students to have fun and de-stress before final exams. Naomi was a member of Phi Alpha Delta and the National Lawyers Guild. She, is, she has also worked on campus and is one of the friendly faces that greets people at the entrance of the administration building. And she opens the door for me when she sees me juggling everything too, <laughs> which is always helpful. <laughs> Juliana Gorman. So Jules was nominated over and over and over again for her work with the Central Pennsylvania Civil Law Clinic. I thought her nominations, who were from her peers, best summed up why she's receiving this recognition. So I'm going to share just a few of the comments with you now. And I'm going to try not to cry. Okay, okay, yeah. Jules has spent countless hours working for the Civil Law Clinic, aiding other clinic students and bringing her clients to justice. On top of her clinic work, Jules has been a consistent library worker, spending her nights and weekends making sure students are able to utilize all the library has to offer. She is a valuable member of, of Widener's Moot Court team and has volunteered to help out the trial advocacy team as a witness to aid other students in furthering their oral advocacy skills. Another student wrote, Jules cares about each client that comes through the clinic. She cares about every intern who works there. She is in this field because she knows that we can make a difference when it comes to the indigent population we serve, and her character exemplifies just that. She is helpful, patient, empathetic, and hardworking. In my opinion, Jules is the exact type of person you would want fighting on your behalf. But I have more, I still have more. Okay. Jules has been an asset at the law clinic. Her positive attitude, encouraging words, and outstanding personality helps make the clinic better. It always brightens my day walking in to see her. And I think the one I love the most is everyone needs Jules in their firm. <laughs> Professor Scott, do you agree with the comments and Professor Waldemar? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Danielle Holiday, while at the law school, Come on Danielle was a member of the Law Review and served on the executive board of the Moot Court Honor Society. Additionally, she served as the president of the Business Law Society and was instrumental in planning events that brought high profile legal practitioners to campus. Danielle worked as an academic success fellow for, the, for business organizations and taxation of business entities classes where she provided extra support to students enrolled in those courses. She was also a research assistant for Professor Johnson, focusing on corporate taxation. Danielle also provided valuable service to the law school by assisting with our faculty recruitment efforts by attending teaching demonstrations for prospective faculty members. Congratulations, Danielle. <laughs> Neoma Ebay. 
<laughs> Neoma made valuable contributions to the law school as the former president of the Black Law Students Association. Under her leadership, she created and implemented our first of what is now the annual field day event. Neoma is also a member of Phi Alpha Delta and has served as a Student Bar Association peer mentor. She's a member of Moot Court and was part of the team that participated in the Federal Bar Association Thurgood Marshall Memorial Moot Court competition held in Washington, DC. Congratulations, Neoma. <laughs> Kelsey Johnson. Kelsey served as vice president and treasurer of the Black Law Students Association and was an active member of Phi Alpha Delta. Kelsey received multiple nominations from her peers for this recognition and notably, I thought I would share a couple of them with you. Since meeting Kelsey, she has always greeted me with open arms and helped me throughout my first year of law school. She reached out to me to join BALSA and has been one of the highlights of my first year in law school. Next student said, Kelsey has done so many great things to make every minority student feel included. Another comment was, Kelsey has done great things to enhance the law school experience for minorities here at Widener, and that needs to be applauded. We are blessed to have crossed her path in our law school journey. Congratulations, Kelsey. Mm -hmm. And Charlotte Thompson could not be with us today, unfortunately, but she did amazing work um, as part of our Student Ambassadors Program. So congratulations to all of our outstanding service winners. Thank you. You make our campus vibrant through your hard work, and you've bettered the experience of other law students, and we can't thank you enough for that. Our next award is the Dean Anthony J. Santoro Outstanding Service Award. This award is given to a graduating student who, in the opinion of the Student Bar Association Executive Committee, has demonstrated outstanding and exemplary service, dedication, and support to the Student Bar Association of the Widener University Commonwealth Law School. We are pleased to present this to Jane Machetti, the president of the Student Bar Association. Jane has served as the Student Bar Association president this past year and has held leadership roles throughout her time at the law school. Under Jane's leadership, we have had a wonderful year of student programming and we're thankful for her time and effort that is required outside of the classroom to plan and implement these large scale events in service of our law school community. And I believe Jane has a presentation she would like to make. It's a very fast one. <laughs> um, so as you heard, I was, uh, had an honor and privilege to serve as the SBA president. And our class, uh, class of 2023, would like uh, to present the Widener Law Commonwealth with a present. Uh, class present this year is a class gift, I guess would be better to say, um, is a 75 inch TV that's gonna go to the sidebar uh, with a plaque, class of 2023. So thank you for everybody who donated. Thank you, that'll be a nice addition to our, our rejuged uh, <laughs> sidebar. <laughs> and the students of the future will appreciate your contribution, thank you. But come back and watch the TV, because we're gonna have a new sofa starting next week. So after you, study for, after you pass the bar, how about that? Deal? Okay. <laughs> the Distinguished Service Award is awarded annually to the graduate who has demonstrated through participation in activities of the law school and strong academic achievement, exceptional promise for success in the practice of law and service to the community. We are pleased to present this award to Caitlin Smircheck. It is hard to imagine this campus without Caitlin because she was such a constant presence throughout her time at the law school. Not only has she excelled academically, but she has been a campus leader and mentor that has enriched our campus. 
Caitlin has held leadership positions with our Student Bar Association all three years of her law school journey. She is also president of the Criminal Law Society, a newer organization that she helped to give strong roots. Caitlin has served as Professor Raker Jordan's Academic Success Fellow for both legal methods and essential legal skills. And always one to help others, she volunteered with VITA, providing tax return preparation assistance to people in need on Saturday mornings. But I understand she does not know how to make coffee, just <laughs> FYI. There's a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Hussey trained her though. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, Kate, so we, we give all sorts of skills here. Why no? <laughs> yeah. So, Caitlin has served as a student ambassador where she gave over 20 tours to prospective students, and I have no doubt that she had a positive influence on those prospective students. She was a member of Moot Court and Trial Advocacy Society, and was a member of the Phi Alpha Delta mock trial team that won Best Defense Award when they competed in a national competition in Washington, D.C. So I love to pull the comments from the peers, so here we go. <laughs> I know. Caitlin is a perfect example of what exemplary service is. She always has a bright smile and a positive attitude. She is a friend to all and a positive figure on campus. Caitlin served as my Legal Methods Academic Success Fellow, and even though I knew how busy she was, she always got back to me quickly and made sure she provided valuable feedback. She is so involved, but also has worked so hard in all of her organizations to help make some awesome events. Her kindness to everyone in this school truly shows what we want here at Widener, and she goes out of her way to talk to everyone. Caitlin does not do anything for a resume booster or to simply have a leadership role. Caitlin is the gold standard for what real leadership is and should be. Congratulations. She's crying, we made her cry. <laughs> Next up, we are gonna give the Outstanding Staff Award and Molly Acri, our Registrar and Dean, uh, Assistant Dean of Administration is going to present that award. So I am delighted to present the Outstanding Staff Award to the staff member that you have chosen. I think it's wonderful that you're recognizing our staff because they're really dedicated and work really hard to support you and see you succeed. So this was great. I think it was really fitting that given, as Dean Teplis mentioned, you are the class who started this journey on Zoom. You chose the person who really kept the train on the tracks. Um, so kept things running smoothly. And then when you return to, to campus, I'm sure all of you can recall a time when you're sitting in there for your final exam and your computer's not working the way you want it to. And exam soft is not going well. And it's this person walks in the room and it's like, oh. <laughs> Everything gets fixed, we all remain calm. He does a great job making things run smoothly. So whether it's your ID, getting you into the building, or whether it's running this whole event, this person does it all. I think he has sat through more JD law school classes than any other person on this campus. <laughs> so great job, I wanna congratulate, and I don't see him because I think he's probably behind the scenes running this, but. Brian Fernbach, congratulations on this award. deserved. What would we do without Brian? Oh my. Yeah. The next award we're going to present is the Outstanding Faculty Award, and I would like to invite Danielle Holliday to the podium to present this award. Thank you. So this is given to an outstanding professor who I have had the privilege to work very closely with for about the last year. Not only is this person an excellent professor, but an excellent person who's probably one of the most approachable people that I have ever known. 
on top of being very funny. So he makes his class classes very welcoming um, and truly cares and wants the best and will do anything for his students. So I'm happy to give this award to Professor Johnson. Congratulations, Professor Johnson. Dean Morangello, would you like to come up to present the next award, please? Hi, I have the great privilege of being able to present the valedictorian award which is given annually to the student who has achieved the highest grade point average in the graduating class. We are pleased to present this award to the class of 2023 valedictorian Rachel Jones. Now wait, I need to talk about Rachel. As the class valedictorian, Rachel has consistently demonstrated academic excellence. She earned deans list honors every semester and received the distinction of earning six Cali Awards as a result of earning the top grade in six of her classes. In addition to her terrific coursework, Rachel has been a member of the Widener Commonwealth Law Review and this past year served as the Executive Internal Supervising Editor. Rachel's law review comment about the sentencing practices of DUI offenders under Pennsylvania law was selected for publication in the law review. Rachel will also leave law school with the distinction of having co-authored with Professor John Dernbach a chapter for a book on United States climate law and policy. In addition to writing, Rachel has also demonstrated excellent oral advocacy skills by participating in the Phi Alpha Delta mock trial competition and earning recognition as an outstanding defense award finalist. Upon graduation, Rachel will begin a clerkship with Judge Coriel Stevens on the Pennsylvania Superior Court. Congratulations, Rachel, we are very proud of you. just a little bit more to go here. So um, the President's Award is given annually to a second year student who has demonstrated high scholastic achievement and possesses high potential for meaningful future contributions to the law school, the community, and the profession. This year's President's Award is presented to Erica Firestone. Unfortunately for us, but not her, um, she could not be here today because she is in Greece, correct, on her honeymoon. <laughs> so we congratulate Erica on that and uh, on that. All right, the Dean's Award. The Dean's Award, <laughs> hey, hey. Well, out of the photos that are out there, that's not too bad. <laughs> uh, the Dean's Award is awarded to a student who has demonstrated outstanding legal aptitude, exemplary service, significant leadership skills, and the potential to become an outstanding member of the legal community. It is with great pleasure that I present the 2023 Dean's Award to Cheyenne Boyer. We are very fortunate that Cheyenne selected Widener Law Commonwealth for her law school education. The law school and her classmates have benefited much by her positivity, her desire to create a robust law school environment, and her kindness. Cheyenne has lifted other students up as an academic mentor in her role as an academic success fellow, and as also as a campus leader as president of the student ambassadors and the vice president of academics for the Student Bar Association. Additionally, Cheyenne has served as a member of the Moot Court Honor Society and the Trial Advocacy Honor Society. 
She worked at the Cumberland County District, uh, District Attorney's Office for the past two years and will join them as an ADA after passing the bar exam. She recently wrote that every time a potential student asks what I love about Widener, I immediately tell them about our students and faculty because this community is what makes Widener so great. Thank you, Cheyenne, for your contributions to the law school and being a major reason why our community here is so great. Congratulations. And at this point, I'd like to invite down Mr. Doug Wolfberg, who's a 1996 graduate of the law school and a member of the university's board of trustees. Doug? Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, congratulations to all the award winners and graduates. It's amazing. What a, what a group you all are. The accomplishments are amazing just sitting here and listening to everything. I, I want to... Um, specifically congratulate the students who suffered through my health law class uh, last semester on their awards, and Richard and Carrie for winning the scholarships that I am involved with. Um, so uh, the noted philosopher Dr. Seuss once wrote that we never realize the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. And that was true for me in the fall of 1995 um, as I date myself as a dinosaur here. Um, when I walked into the office of the Dean of Students, who was at that time uh, Robin Meadows. Robin, would you mind coming down? For Ro <laughs> Robin has no idea, I'm pretty sure, why she's... A You'll just have to stand next to me and listen to the story for a second. So. The, this was the beginning of my last year in law school, and so I was at the, you know, there was light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but the reason I walked into her office that day was to tell her I was withdrawing from law school. And the reason was because um, my mother had just been diagnosed with cancer, and not to make it this happy occasion a sob story, but a few months before that, my father had died of cancer, so I felt my mom could probably use the help. So I told uh, Dean Meadows that I was withdrawing. And any of you who know Dean Meadows can hear her say what she said next to me, which was, no. <laughs> you're, not go you're not going anywhere. You're graduating with your classmates. You're getting your degree on time, as scheduled. Go be with your mom. I'm going to take care of everything with your professors. and." your assignments, your finals, we'll, we'll work all of that out. She didn't say, let me check with the dean, and let me see the, let me look at the ABA rules, and let me, let me see what your professors have to say. She, she called the play, owned the decision, advocated for, for me, and uh, changed my life. Uh, fast forward to the spring of 1996. Uh, I did graduate on time with my classmates, as predicted, commanded. Um, <laughs> Sadly, my, my mother was, did not survive to, to join us on that happy occasion. But so back to Dr. Seuss, that we don't realize the value of a moment till it becomes a memory. And with the hindsight of 20 some years, uh, almost 30 years, uh, the clarity of that moment has become you know, so obvious to me because it was one of, it really helped directly lead to my ability to become a lawyer, practice law, have a career. So, it, I, but I feel like it was a fairly typical moment for you because I also came to learn about the commitment to student success that Robin embodies and that I also observed from all of the faculty here. And again, it was that moment when I look back on it with the perspective of these decades. Um, sorry to throw you under that bus yeah. with me, <laughs> but um, that, that the import of that moment is so clear. And it enabled me to have that career. And it enables me to do what I'm about to do right now, which is to announce uh, that I'm making a $50,000 contribution uh, to endow the Robin Meadows Scholarship for Student Success. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <clears throat> 
this is not a check for fifty thousand dollars. We we do that in a different way, but uh, it's it's a letter to sort of uh, prove that I actually did it with the university. But um, but and I also I think this was a fitting time to do this because of all all of you being here, and also to see how these awards sort of happen, right? I mean. These are names on plaques and scholarships, um, but I, I was a beneficiary. I didn't have two nickels to rub together when I was sitting in these seats. And these scholarships meant the world uh, to me at the time. And being in a position to be able to give back is because of what was done for me here. And I just think that's important. And uh, as you could hear from the other scholarships that I've endowed as well, I, I you know, I, I want have always wanted to pay that back, and over the years, uh, that's what I've done. So I've considered what, what you did and what everybody here did for me as an investment. This is simply interest on that investment. So uh, congratulations, uh, Robin, for, for uh, this scholarship and for everything you've done, not just for me, but for the generations and uh, students. Sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Uh, of students who, who, I, who have been helped. But this, Robin's name is on this, but I also want this to exemplify the commitment that all the faculty uh, makes uh, to the students here. And for that reason, this scholarship will be chosen by representatives of the faculty to award to a student on an annual basis. So uh, thanks for giving me a few minutes, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Doug, I'd like to, you know, on behalf of, of all of us here at the law school itself, thank you for your generosity and support over the years. Um, you have been a great friend to all of us. Um, you have been at every step behind us in what we've done, offered us your counsel um, as we seek to always move in the right direction to do the best that we can do um, for our students, our graduates. Um, it is always a great comfort to me to know um, of your support for the operation and that you have our back out there as we um, do our work here with these graduates and the good things that we've seen today we know it bears fruit and it really shines through on that so I um, on behalf of all of us and personally thank you for all that you've done for the law school you're ready you're all right Dean Tuplitz has the uh, the directions here, so. The final word. <laughs> so first, congratulations. And before we close, I also want to would like to thank Stephanie Engerer, uh, Tara Mead. Where Tara? She's out there waiting for you to take your photo. Um, uh, Brian Fernball, who you met. Uh, Mark Hughes, who's out making a beautiful reception that we are about to get to. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes work to, to, to be done to make this a successful event, and they were integral to today's event. So thank you. So I would also kindly ask that the student award recipients remain so that we can take formal photographs in front of the backdrop um, outside A180. Um, these photographs will be available on, on Widener Commonwealth's Flickr page. Um, Dean Hussey tells me you're going to flee to the reception and not take photos. Please prove me right that you'll stay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want him to have to say, I told you you weren't getting any photos. Um, the other thing is, if anybody who received a plaque is interested in the envelope that it came in for, like, cushion, um, let us know. We have all of those for you. Um, for everybody else who is not going, who's not going to stay for a photo, meaning anybody who's not a student award recipient, because obviously our students are going to stay, um, please join us for food, drinks, and fellowship in the gallery and in the, on the patio that is behind the gallery. Um, it's a beautiful day to be outside, get some fresh air. Um, there is signage 
uh, that will direct you outside of this room. And I look forward to seeing everybody at commencement tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you.